Alright, so today I am going to be changing the exhaust on the 2007 Nissan Altima. It's been a long time coming. Um, I've had this exhaust leak on my car for probably, gosh, like 10 years or so. Um, it's always been a small exhaust leak. It was a, it, It's basically a crack in the um, in the catalytic converter that is integrated into the exhaust manifold, as you can see right here. Um, okay, the actual crack was on the other side, so I wasn't able to show it. But it started as kind of a a smell in the car, like when I would turn it on. First thing, cold start up, I would just smell like this exhaust gas. And I'm like, this, this car is, wasn't very old at the time. It was only like maybe four or five years old. Um, and then slowly over time, the crack got louder. So on cold starts, it would sound really loud. And then after the car would warm up, the, the crack would kind of, kind of seal itself off. So I kind of just put it off for quite a while. And today, I finally said, you know what, I'm going to change the exhaust. This, this project was actually a two-day project. The first day was pretty much taking everything off the car, including the old exhaust. And then the, the next day was putting on the new exhaust. So, we're starting out here, taking off the uh, valve cover. Okay, now I'm taking off the uh, part of the intake and this screw would not turn for me. So basically it just slides on. You really don't have to loosen it, that those screws per se. They kind of like snap into place there. So you guys make sure you take off the, uh, the whole intake pretty much got to go where I'm taking off there. You don't have to take off anything else past the, the filter. That's not in the way, but the front part here that would definitely be in the way. So it's really just those two screws I showed you earlier. And I had to work it off. But it wasn't too bad. You see the opening on each side? It kind of allows you to snap it into place. So you really don't have to unscrew it. One of my screws came off. Um, so it's not too bad. <clears throat> this part is just, you know, showing everything you have to loosen. This is for the coolant reservoir. This is that one 10 millimeter bolt. And then that should pop off. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then there's a little um, clamp there that you have to squeeze to take off the, uh, the tube there for the runoff. Mm -hmm. So like I said, like this exhaust leak, it's, it's been my very minor, but uh, it just finally got to the point where I was like, I'm just tired of it because I had to keep my um, exhaust, not my exhaust, but my, uh, my, my, my blower fan, I had to keep that on recirculation. Anytime I would turn off recirculation in the, in the HVAC, um, I'd start smelling the exhaust. And I just got tired of it. Having, you know, having that smell over time can really mess you up. So at this point now, I'm taking off the serpentine belt. Pretty standard stuff. And the reason why I have to take off the serpentine belt is because I have to get the alternator out of the way. Where they put the alternator is basically blocking a couple, maybe not even a couple, maybe just one bolt that is directly underneath it for the exhaust manifold. That's the grounding cable for the alternator. So I think that had a little washer with it too. So just be careful when you're taking that off because you might lose that little washer. And there was another cable. Be careful not to snip these cables either. I just did that real quick just to get it out of the way and um, move on to the next thing. So the alternator 
uh, itself has two bolts, um, one on top and there's one on the bottom. And the bolts themselves weren't that bad, like they're pretty standard fare. Um, the, the more difficult part, as you're going to see soon, is getting the alternator off of the mounting bracket. That was challenging. <clears throat> and I think the bolt size for this was like a, I want to say 14 millimeter. 14 or 15 millimeter. So that bolt was actually quite long. But like once it's just it's just straightforward. But like I said, you're gonna see up here soon. It was a battle. So you think, okay, this is coming off. I'm shaking it and jiggling it and trying to trying to get it off. Nope. After about a few minutes, I was like, nope, I'm going to have to start prying this thing open. So. Oh, yeah. And sometimes it's a good idea to spray it down with some rust penetrant. I was trying to get in there into the crevice uh, between the alternator and the mounting bracket. It was kind of difficult. And it seemed to help a little bit. As you can see, I'm prying on the alternator, trying to push it out. Um, yeah, so. It takes a little bit of time to get the alternator off of this bracket. At least it did for me. I can't, I can't say it's going to do that for every Altima, but it was definitely a struggle to get the alternator off. But eventually, as you can see, it breaks free, and you you can take it off. So what I did, um, and you don't have to do it this way, but I did it. I kept the the uh, the power cords and the, and the power connection. I just kept it on there. I wasn't trying to replace the alternator. If you're trying to replace the alternator, by all means, you got to take it off. So what I ended up doing was, uh, oh yeah. And that's when I broke my, my electrical connector there, the little tab that kind of locks it in place. It broke off there. And at this point I was trying to get the alternator out to the left side. It wasn't working. Um, so what I had to do was remove this bracket here with two bolts. I think it was a 13 millimeter bolt there. Just two bolts, you just break them loose and then that bracket comes out. Once that bracket comes out, it makes it easier to move the alternator on top of the engine to let it sit there. Um, I don't think you have to take this bracket off, but for me, I found it just easier to take it off instead of trying to work around it and it would also give you more access to when you get the exhaust manifold off and won't be in the way when you're trying to pull the manifold off and put the new one in it to me it just made more sense just to take it off so now with that out of the way i was able to take the alternator set it on top of the engine and that's where it would just rest the rest of the the install Okay, so now we're on to the uh, O2 sensor plug. This um, is pretty straightforward. There's a little tab there. So what you have to do is open that, that tab. And then I had a little flathead screwdriver. I would I ended up just moving it down, as you can see here. You just slide that sucker in there. And then once you got that open, you just pull apart. And boom, there you go. That's all there is to that. The next step would be to take off the heat shield for the exhaust manifold. There was five bolts, uh, 10 millimeter, pretty standard stuff. I did define that these bolts were kind of rusted, like the heads were rusted as you can see. So sometimes the, the bolts would get stuck in my, in my socket. But I mean, overall it's pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I did not keep my heat shield at the end. Um, so if you are planning on putting the heat shield back on, um, it should go on the same way as before. Um, just hold on to your bolts. And if you can see Right below the ratchet, there's a little line there. There's a little crack. That is where actually my crack in my exhaust was. That little tiny micro line or micro fracture. It was from, um, I think it, I think it cracked at the weld. 
it cracked up the weld, I believe. I can't remember all the way. So here we go. There's the exhaust manifold. All right. So the next step I did was I just removed the O2 sensor. I reused my O2 sensors. Um, nothing was wrong with them. Uh, they looked good. They still performed good. And even now, like it, it didn't cause any trouble with me. So the next step after you get the O2 sensor off would be to work on the five actual bolts that hold on the exhaust manifold. I sprayed it with a little bit of rust penetrant. It didn't need much. I mean, the bolts looked good. They didn't look weathered or rusted at all. Uh, they mean, just dirty, really. So I would spray it with some rust penetrant on all five. <clears throat> and then just get the work loosening them. Um, the bolt size, I think it was, uh, oh gosh, what was that? I don't know the bolt size. I think it was a 15. I think it was a 15 millimeter. Or 14. I can't remember. But anyway, it's just a standard, it's a standard size, so. I'm sorry, not a standard size, a metric size. Oh gosh. Yeah, these weren't on too tight. I think they tighten, um, at the end, I can look it up. Get all five bolts off. And um, so once those five bolts are off, the next step would be to go ahead and remove these bolts that connect the catalytic converter assembly to the downpipe but mine as you saw were rusted so my my uh, little bro stepped in here and you might be able to see him in the video it may not anyway he's pretty good with a hacksaw so I kind of let him just do it and handle it because I was like oh I mean if you know what you're doing go for it so you can watch him make quick work of this exhaust but that's uh that's where I did. I just ended up cutting it because the whole exhaust system, I mean, it was 13 years old. Those bolts were rusted through. So once you make that cut, there's only one more bolt left, and that is actually connected to the um, exhaust manifold. Um, it's a standard, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 13 millimeter bolt. Um, it's really hard. It was difficult to get to, but I mean, it wasn't impossible. And once we get the exhaust, that bolt off the exhaust manifold, I was able to just simply lift up and pull out the remaining everything. And don't forget to take off the old exhaust manifold, as you can see. Okay. And then now we're just cleaning everything, uh, washing things, wiping down, trying to get all the gunk off of the head. It was pretty standard stuff. Not a big deal. Okay, so once with the exhaust manifold out of the way, now we move down further, and instead of taking those bolts off, as you can see how rusted they are, my brother just said, yeah, I got you, bro. We're just going to cut this thing off. And that's exactly what he did. This saved, <laughs> I would say this saved probably hours of our, our time trying to take this thing apart. Instead of just trying to wrestle with those bolts, we just said, you know, let's just cut it. Hack it away. So this is after the resonator, further down the, uh, the system. He had to make two more cuts. Um, this cut was, I believe, on the um, passenger side, rear. And he's just cutting right along, uh, you know, where they connect. Um, and uh, for the blade, I mean, it's just a regular uh, metal cutting blade. Uh, for mild steel. I mean, that's all most exhaust systems are. Um, I got a thicker one that can really cut through some serious metal, just to be completely safe. Um, but yeah, it was pretty straightforward. Just cut off the exhaust. Now at this point, um, it was really just taking them off of the mounting points, and and that was it. This is at near the back where the where the exhaust splits off. 
into a Y. It says you, this is a dual exhaust car. So that was that one hang there, and then this is on, on this is over top of the uh, passenger side rear, or passenger side I should say. And once you pull back, it should come right off. As you can see, carefully. Yeah, those mufflers had some weight to them. Okay, so there you go. And then there was one on the uh, driver's side, and that was it. So now we have the old exhaust completely off, and now we're going to add the new exhaust. This is day two. This is day two. Should be a grand old time. So I got that exhaust manifold off of eBay, and it came with all the hardware, it even came with gloves and the exhaust manifold gasket. <clears throat> okay, so first, <clears throat> as you saw earlier, I cleaned off the head as best I could, and then you put the exhaust manifold gasket in. Now this is, this is a little snippet of me putting on the, the hanger for the exhaust manifold. <clears throat> Remember that bolt I told you it was hard to get to? Well, this is how you actually Put that together and all I did was go look at the old one and compare it to what I had for the new one and I made it work as best as I could and there you can see how it's set up pretty straightforward stuff okay so now we're gonna go to the actual three studs of the exhaust and you just want to just drive the studs in as you can <clears throat> okay so the next step would be to put your O2 sensor in I figure I'd do it with the exhaust manifold out of the car because it's a lot easier you don't have to you know reach down and in and everything's right there nice and straightforward in front of you so you get some anti-seize lubricant on there Put them on the threads nice and good. Just coat them like that. You don't want to go too much and definitely try not to get any on the sensor itself. If you manage to somehow get it on your sensor, clean it off. Make sure there's none of it showing up. All right. So now with the O2 sensor on, we can drop the new exhaust manifold in. Here we go. Look how shiny that looks. Oh, it looks so good. This whole project was very fulfilling for me because I knew this exhaust leak existed for years. And to finally get the new one on, it felt so good after I was done this project. It was like a little bit of, you know, like serotonin released in my brain I just felt so accomplished after this project was done so now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, the nuts on now I forgot to put some anti seize on here in the video but I did go back I took the took the nuts off and I put anti seize on the threads so I know what you're seeing but I did go back I, I caught my mistake I just didn't want to record it all over again so now this this uh, this one hanger down here at the bottom was kind of a pain in the neck to get to but um what i ended up doing was taking the arm off of the manifold screwing it in into the block and then putting that part back together it wasn't too bad doing it this way so just a heads up a little tip a little hint for you if that's what you're uh, up against just just take it off and then put it back together and then just tighten everything down. All right, so now I am gonna tighten everything up. Yep, and I tightened everything by hand. Well, until then, I realized I have my electric ratchet. I've been forgetting about my electric ratchet so many times. I'm like, why am I doing this by hand? So anyway, you want to start by working on the middle bolt or nut first, 
and then work your way alternating to the outside. So I did that hand tight, or just got it tight, snug enough, and then once I got that done, I went back with my torque wrench and I torqued it down to 44 foot-pounds of torque. 44 foot-pounds of torque. So it's not crazy tight, but it's definitely it's good and snug. So I started with my second one to the right, and then once that snapped in, then I went to my left side. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Once this is done here, then um, we just move on down to the rest of the exhaust. And it's important to make sure you tighten these down to, to the right spec. You, you over tighten it, you run the risk of um, exhaust leak or warping something. You just want to work with what you got, what it tells you to do, just tighten it down. Here, here I am tightening down the O2 sensor to spec. Uh, this was um, 38 foot pounds of torque. So again, not bad. And then once you got that snugged in, you want to plug in your O2 sensor. Just it should just click right in straight forward like that and that's it you're done all done all right so now oh yeah we're working on the downstream o2 sensor so same deal as before put your anti-seize lubricant on around the threads all the way around like that and just start screwing it in torque that down too i think at this point bob was there um helping me the first day he, he he was busy, he couldn't come, but he came the second day to help me install it. So he's the one holding the camera at this point. So make sure you tighten that down to 38 too, 38 foot pounds. All right, now we're uh, we're getting ready to put on the down pipe. It's so weird the way that Nissan designed that down pipe, how flat it is in some points. Okay, so you you might notice a little bit difference. Earlier, I was putting studs in by hand. Um, at this point, uh, the studs or the the nuts for the studs weren't going in very well. So I was like, well, let me just chew these bolts. These bolts ended up going in pretty easy. So I was like, all right, let's just ride with that. Um, that's the reason why it looks different there. Um, so, but you'll see later on that I actually do go back to the studs. So now we're doing the rest of the downpipe and the Y assembly. And you see Bob down way down there. He's mounting that end. And we had a little bit of trouble because the way the hangers were set up on the car, we actually had to take the whole assembly and push it upwards past the downpipe that we installed before that. And then we were able to manage to get it on. Okay, now this is one of the mufflers. I think this is Bob installing the driver's side now there's those uh, those rings go around and what those do basically is as you tighten it down those rings compress to help seal all the way around that exhaust so nothing leaks out so here we are tag teaming working together now I'm still I believe at this point I'm down uh, still tightening up the bolts uh, between the downpipe and the resonator assembly. And here's Bob doing the other side. Same deal. The, we got the ring gasket. Put the bolts in place. And that's it. I mean, that's all there really is to this uh, exhaust. It was really just a bunch of bolts loosening and tightening. A couple of hacksawing, but it was pretty okay. Bob, I tell you what, Bob is becoming a pro at exhaust. He's getting so good at it. So, yeah. <clears throat> now, the bolts for the rest of the exhaust, I didn't really torque down, per se. I just tightened it as best as I could. These are grade 8 bolts. Um, you really don't want to get anything lower than a grade 8 and just tighten it down as hard as you can really 
you know what I mean? You don't want no exhaust leaking. So here I am using my electric ratchet to make sure that thing's good and tight. Same as the back, the back ones here. I just went as hard as I could with it. And I was like, you know, it's good enough. Yep, those two bolts, that's it. And two bolts on the other side. Oh, look at that exhaust. Just looking so good. Looking so good. Okay, so there's a lot that happened before I actually shot this shot. But in the interest of trying to save time, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to let it be. But I ended up snapping one of those bolts, those silver bolts. Turns out that was like a grade 4.8 or something bolt on it. It said 4. No, I think it was 5. It said 5. So I was like, I don't know why they did that. Um, but again, I couldn't complain because that was from the... Uh, the downpipe assembly. Those balls came from the downpipe assembly, which had the other cat catalytic converter on. So I ended up putting the studs back on, as you saw earlier in the video, and just using that. And it worked fine. So now I'm putting on the mounting bracket back. And once I got the mounting bracket in, it was time to wrestle the alternator back into place. That took another 5 10 minutes, but eventually we got it. <laughs> we managed to get that back in. Uh, we had to use the crowbar, as you can see. We had to try to line up as best we could. And like I said, it just takes a little bit of time, uh, a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of muscle, but eventually the bolt finally went home. Okay, so this is when we tighten them down. Um, the torque. I think the torque on this was like 45 foot pounds. <clears throat> yeah, I guess I didn't show the torquing of that, but it's uh, it's like 45 foot pounds for the alternator bolts. So you definitely want to make sure that those are at least that tight. Okay. So once you get the alternator bolts in, you just got to basically put the serpentine belt back on. Oh yeah, and don't forget the grounding strap. And don't forget the plug in the um, the plug that goes into the alternator the one that I broke the tab on all I ended up doing was pushing it back in it doesn't seem like it's backing out any so and then here we go getting ready to start her up first start up success that was the quietest startup I had in 10 years on this vehicle at this point you put the valve cover back on and you put the Good. You know and then you're pretty much done and that's it thanks for watching um like or subscribe and we'll have plenty more uh, content for you guys thanks again